Now, this is a topic about the introduction to fuzzy inference system. Now we have the genetic algorithm. We have a um, different kind of learning algorithm. We are going to we are going to do in these modules. But what kind of a structure we can implement the intelligence as well as to uh, realize the learning? And then fuzzy inference system is one of them. Another one that would be the neural network. Now compare with the neural network, the fuzzy logic has um, the capability to compete with works. That means we are able to incorporate the human knowledge into the structure so that to make this structure explainable. Yeah, uh, just go back to uh, the motivation why we are going to use the fuzzy logic. The first thing that is as a human, we can do a lot of complex problem, a complicated problem, and using the imprecise information. For example, if I'm going to grab a bottle in front of me, I do not need to know exactly the size of the bottle as well as the distance between me and the bottle, and then so I can just use some, um, use some ideas, use some roughly the distance, and then I'm going to I can pack the drop bottle not even i need to know the texture of the bottle yeah I, I will just predict what kind of force i'm going to grab the bottle so this information and i use the, my common sense as well as my expert knowledge or the experience um to process the information to get the task done yeah so if you look into the details, how do I represent this information? Actually, I will use the if then format. That means if something happened, then I'm going to do that kind of action. So you will find out more detailed description about this if then format to represent knowledge. But now the fuzzy logic, that is a theory of the fuzzy Z. That means we mainly use the fuzzy Z to represent um, some knowledge and then so we have a particular structure so that so we have this structure to process the information and then demonstrate some knowledge and we use this knowledge to perform reasoning yeah so this is just not just knowledge representation we can use the fuzzy logic system to do reasoning that is to make decision yeah for some unseen example yeah now, we can use the fuzzy th set theorem to mimic the human spirit, that is, the human intelligence. And then, so, and in that case, we can make the knowledge computable, that is, we can compute with works using fuzzy logic. Yeah, so that means we can use some computer to implement the fuzzy logic system. The fuzzy logic system, something like our brain. And now, take a look at what would be the classical set as well as the fuzzy set. Yeah, the classical set. That is, we use the classical set, or we use the fuzzy set to represent um, an object, including the knowledge that may be subject to imposition or weakness that is something uncertain. So take a look at this example. When I say today is weekend, how do I define weekend? Say the day of the week, if we are going to use the classical set and then so that means either it is weekend or not. So Monday, Thursday, Saturday, and then that would be the day of week. But what about the day of weekend? If we are using the fuzzy set to represent that, that means we can just simply think that whether Thursday is it weekend? We do not have either zero or one because Thursday that is very close to weekend and then so our mood of weekend is building up. When it goes to Friday and then so we have a more stronger feeling about weekend and then maybe Friday afternoon we still feel the weekend is coming and then so Friday evening and then so we may we, we may treat that this is the, the weekend. So that means that means in reality it is not just zero or one 
yeah so we have something in between and then so so in this set we use zero to one to indicate how much the object belongs to the set yeah i just give you um some more detailed example this is the classical set on the right yeah so we have either zero or one and now this classical set that is Thursday, that is zero. Friday, that is zero. Saturday, Sunday, they belong to weekend. So this is one. Yeah. So the whole day of Friday belongs to zero. It doesn't make sense, right? So when we talk about uh, fuzzy set, we have we are going to assign some value in between. Say, Thursday, we have zero point three feeling about the weekend. Friday and then so we have 0 0.7 feeling um the mood of weekend Saturday that is one yeah and then Sunday because the next day that is Monday the the mood feeling the weekend that is decreasing for example 0 0.9 yeah so we call these values they are the membership value yeah so that means we use zero to represent it does not belong to the set one it belongs to the set when we talk about the fuzzy set we have multi-valued well yeah multi-valued membership function so something in between zero to one if we are going to draw it continuously yeah so we have the continuous membership function now this is just a discrete value thursday friday we do not have anything in between but think about that from thursday in the morning that is to that is um to friday morning and then so we have 24 hours so that means right here uh sorry right here here that is 24 hours this is 24 hours so when time pass by and then so we can measure the weakness using the two valued membership function if we are going to use the classical set yeah so all of this time instance they belong to zero once we get into the morning of saturday suddenly it jumps to one to indicate this is one and then the same when it gets to the monday morning yeah so that is it jumps to jump down to zero to indicate that is the end of the the uh the weekend so because as i mentioned that in reality we should have a continuous feeling say right here this is the curve first day morning and then so maybe it is 0 0.1 uh first day afternoon we increase building up the mood 0 0.3 and then so uh, first day a uh, friday morning that is 0 0.5 something like that we build up um this feeling so at here maybe Saturday afternoon we still have the feeling of weekend but it is going to drop when time elapses yeah so because it is closer to close when it is closer to Monday and then so the degree the membership grade should be reduced yeah so this is the we call this is a membership function that membership function that is the x-axis that is the item we are going to measure the y-axis that is how much it belongs to this membership yeah so this membership that is the weekend whether these items belongs to weekend yeah we use the y value the membership value to indicate how much it belongs to um uh, to that fuzzy set okay and now it is not necessary to only have one fuzzy set we can extend it into the multiple one for example this is the classical set for time of the year. Yeah, so we can have the spring, summer, fall, winter. Different countries will have different period of these four seasons. For example, from March the first to June the end, and then so this is spring. Yeah, so the membership that is suddenly jumps from zero to one along this period, and then suddenly at the end of the June it ju jump back to zero the same for summer the same for fall the same for winter now this is the fuzzy set when we use the fuzzy set we also use the same we ask the same question is the current date spring 
summer, fall or winter. Yeah, so the first of March, maybe the degree that is 0 0.5 for spring, we still feel a little bit about spring and then uh, that is 50% and then we also um, we also think that it is kind of winter. Yeah, so if you follow this light gray membership function, this is uh, winter. So because it is just a transition from winter to spring. Yeah, so 50% spring, 50% winter. So when we get to the middle between March and June, and then so we have a stronger feeling that is for spring and then for all the West, summer, fall and spring. They are, have the zero value, but when you walk through this axis, and then so it will give you different value of four different value of winter, different value of spring, different value of summer. Yeah, so that is this is the membership function just tell you that how much it belongs to spring, summer, fall, and winter. So it makes more sense for our real applications. Okay, so now I'm going to. Um, give you a more complete example to demonstrate the idea we have. This is a driving problem. Assume that I'm driving this blue car. I would like to keep a safe distance between cars. That means I assume that I measure this information using my eyes. I just estimate the distance. That is what we have, what we are doing every day yeah so that means no matter what whether you're walking or you're driving if you would like to keep a safe distance and then so you just use our eyes to measure the distance between objects and then say the front car and our car and then according to this information we can determine how much the speed we have to control this car to be yeah so assume that this is X and then I would like to determine what speed I should keep for this car. And now, in my mind, I will have these three simple rules. If the distance X, that is right here, that is small. Okay, so if this car is very close to the front car and then the speed should be low, yeah? And then if the distance, my car is in the middle, so I just keep um, the speed steady and then if the distance is large just like this and then I'm going to uh, set the speed to be high in order to reduce the distance between these two cars yeah so we can have more than these three linguistic rules for example if the distance is very small and then the speed is very low if the distance is very large and then the speed should be very high so and so yeah so you can have more rules to describe uh, this problem. Now, we would like to ask ourselves that when the distance from the front car is 3.5 or so, so what speed should I keep? And then so now that is different people will have different meaning about what it means by small, medium and large, as well as the speed low, steady, high, according to different understanding, according to different culture, according to different regulation. So we need to understand all the meanings about that, or we need to define the meaning of all these words so that we can determine the speed. Yeah. Okay. And now this is something uh, we can do. Assume that I'm going to define small, medium, large, like this. That means I use the membership function. The red, green, blue, they are the membership function. Membership functions we have mentioned in the beginning. The spring, fall, winter, um, all these seasons in the previous example, they are membership function. So now we use different membership function to define how small is small, medium and large. Yeah. But now this is the, according to this information, if the distance is 3.5 meter, and then so we can just look at the X axis. I just defined the small, medium, large, in this domain 
zero to ten. From zero to four, I have a membership function like this. That means up to four, and then so it is no longer be small. From one to nine, we have a membership function right here. That is somewhere we can describe that the distance is medium. More than six, I use large to de to define that. Yeah, okay. So now, according to this information, according to these rules, and then so if it is three point five, my decision that is the speed should not be very low, and more towards steady, but definitely the speed is not high. I'm not quite sure whether you agree with me or not, but at least when you look at this answer, you should get some ideas about what that speed it is. Yeah. But anyway, how do I come up with this conclusion? Yeah. Take a look at these rules combined with this membership function. So when the distance x, that is. Three point five right here. Yeah. So the distance x that is three point five. I'm going to evaluate how when um how small is the distance, and then based on that information, how low the speed should be. Now, x that is at this point, I draw a vertical line, and then this vertical line cut across small, medium, and large membership function. I come up with these three values. For small, how small it is? Zero point twenty-five. That means the y value right here. That is zero point twenty-five. It just tells you that now it is small, but it is not that small. It is just twenty-five percent belongs to small. Now for the green, we have zero point eight three 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 right here. So that is the y value. That is zero point eight three three three. So this value three point five, it belongs to more to medium according to this value. Definitely, it is not large because according to the blue line, the degree belongs to large. That is zero. This is the x. This is the y value right here. Yeah. So when we draw a line here, draw a line in the to y axis, and then you will just find out these three values. So, using the membership function, it just tells you that how small the distance it is, how medium, how large this, the distance they are, so that we can make decision. So, in other words, that means how much contribution each rule is going to contribute. Yeah. So, or we can just say that these values. They are the level of each rule is going to satisfy. So that means this one should contribute twenty five percent, zero point twenty five. Um, should contribute zero point twenty five to the decision making on the speed. This one should contribute more, zero point eight three 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 to the speed. Yeah, because it just tell you that we satisfy this rule to more than rule one, and then this one because it is zero. The the third rule should not contribute anything in the decision making. That is this answer. Yeah, so it just tell you how much each rule is going to contribute to make up this answer.